Now, have you ever looked at an identity card or at a car plate and wondered why, you know, always at the end there's just this solitary letter hanging out? Well, that is a check digit. But what is a check digit and what does it do? Today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna examine the term and see how exactly it works. All this and more after the break. <laughs> This is 0612TV. Welcome aboard. Hello YouTube and welcome to a tutorial on check digits. Now, you realize that for things like identity card numbers or car plate numbers, these are pretty important official things that you don't want to get wrong. And that is part of the reason why we actually have a check digit. Essentially, the purpose of a check digit is to make sure that if you're filling up a form, that you actually wrote the number correctly. I suppose this is also a means to prevent people from typing in a random identity card number, let's say. Because of course, if the check digit doesn't match, they'll know it's not real. But here's the deal. How does a check digit work and how do we know how it's generated? In fact, there are many ways in which a check digit can be generated. We're actually going to look at the concept in a very general manner. I'm not actually going to go into any individual algorithm but we will cover the most important aspects of how it's normally done as we go along. By the way, let's standardize the examples. Let's just take for example a Singaporean ID card number, which is essentially a letter, seven digits, and then a check digit. So can my check digit actually just check one of the digits? Clearly, that's not a very good idea, seeing as that the rest of the digits can go wrong and that will not be reflected in a check digit. What this then means is that we need a formula that will change things up according to all of the digits that's actually in the number. So okay, we are actually going to create a formula that will take every digit into account. Now here's the deal. If this was my ID number and when typing it in, I accidentally swapped two of the digits, will this be actually reflected in a check digit? In fact, if we have a simple algorithm that, for example, sums everything together, you're not actually going to be able to see that change. So what this means is that we now need to introduce something that actually makes every digit slightly unique. In practical applications, this is in fact an arbitrary set of numbers called weights. Each digit actually has a different weightage. And what this means is that as each individual digit changes, they affect the final check digit differently. So all right, essentially we've found answers to most of the obstacles we have now. The last thing we need to do is to actually have a simple mapping system to create a letter at the end as opposed to a digit. Most popular algorithms start by multiplying each actual digit with the weightage. Then all these products are actually added together to create one big number. As you can probably guess, this number could actually change significantly depending on the original ID number. So the next thing we need is a means to actually consolidate this number into a single letter. This is when we actually use the modulo function. This function is essentially the same as a remainder of a division. And basically most algorithms like to do modulo 11. What this means is that I'm going to grab the sum that has been created. I'm going to divide it by 11 and I'm not going to care about the quotient that is the answer of the division. Instead, I'm actually going to look at the remainder of the division. Now, before we go on, here's one thing you need to know about the modulo function. As you know, the meaning of the remainder of a division is that after I actually evenly divide everything, how much items do I have left? What this means is that the remainder cannot be larger than or equal to the number you are dividing by. And to put this in an elementary school kind of example, if I was actually dividing 10 apples among 3 people, I cannot possibly have a remainder of 4. Because of course, well, I still have enough to go around. I could just give everyone one more and we'll have a remainder of one. So what this of course means is that if we were to actually perform a modulo 11 operation on the final check sum, what we're gonna get is a number from zero to 10. And what this means is that we've mapped a plethora of possible check sums into just zero to 10. First of all, yes, if there are two check sums that happen to have the same answer, modulo 11, then they will map to the same letter, that's okay. So essentially all we have to do now with an answer from 0 to 10 is to map each individual answer to a letter representation. Essentially, that is how you generate a check digit. Now, some of you may be wondering, you know, I could have two completely different checksums, but if they have the same answer modulo 11, 
what we're going to get is we're going to get the same check digit. The answer to that is you are absolutely correct. That is actually not an issue. It is absolutely okay to have multiple check digits that are the same even though they come from different check sums. Since in most cases, this is just an error checking mechanism, chances are if you actually make a mistype, this will be reflected. You'll find that the check digit generated from what you've entered doesn't match what they have on record and they will be able to tell you that, hey, something's wrong. So yeah, basically that is a check digit. We've looked at the definition of a check digit. We have looked at how check digits are actually implemented today. And we've also roughly touched on some applications where this could come in handy. Now, I also mentioned earlier that this is actually a mechanism to prevent people from randomly entering an identification number. And the premise behind that, of course, is the fact that most of the time the weightages are hidden. And of course, the mapping from the final modulo answer to a letter is also hidden. But this is actually relatively easy to crack. As long as you have a reasonably large list of just ID numbers in the same format, you can actually grab this information and try to look for patterns. Which is why, of course, these are kind of secret and kind of not secret, seeing as that you can actually decipher them. But yeah, in general situations, we would say that most people won't actually go to those lengths. So if they want to type in a spoof ID number, that will be caught. Anyway, that's pretty much all I have for you today. I hope you learned something that is novel and interesting. If you have any comments, queries, or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to follow the official Twitter account for this channel at twitter.com slash 0612tv. As always, I appreciate every like, favorite, and subscription you give me. But until next time, you are watching 0612tv.